May 23, people, we've got all of the prompts breaking down. I'm breaking down one every single day. If you don't know which prompt you're doing, I'm gonna have videos about all of these. Go ahead and browse through my channel, but let's knock out this prompt. This is one of the best. This is gonna be one of the most popular. Let's do it. Get an A and T O K. First of all, if you haven't yet, check out get an A and T O K dot com slash free stuff. I'll give you outlines and organizers, examples, everything you need to know to write this essay. Secondly, as you're seeing on the screen here, T O K masterclass dot com is an entire online T O K class. I'm the teacher, not your teacher who's boring. You want me, you want exciting ideas and videos. I've also got a research database, a workbook. Check it out there. If you use the code YouTube subscriber, is 10% off. Let's check out prompt number one, prompt number one, I'm sorry, prompt number two. It's so good. For artists and natural scientists, which is more important? What can be explained or what cannot be explained? Discuss with reference to the arts and the natural sciences. So this is a really interesting idea. One of the reasons why I really feel like this is gonna be one of the most popular is because it's requiring both AOKs. And so when you're talking about which, which prompt should I choose? I just had someone on Reddit ask me, how do you choose the prompt? So this is telling you two of the AOKs right here. A lot of people stress out about choosing it. So if you really don't know which one to choose, choose this. It's so easy and I'm gonna tell you why. Okay, so then, then what they're doing, this is so simple, is they're giving us the um, potential organizing. So you, you, you can choose one section on what can be explained and then the second on what cannot be explained? Um, again, they're they're telling you the AOKs and they're telling you your organization. Um, this is this is so easy. And if you're really struggling with TOK, I just really suggest doing this one. Okay, I would end each paragraph talking about why that evidence is important because that's answering the prompt, but then have a paragraph either for each section or at the end of your body paragraphs that is talking about which side is more important. Because remember, if we go back to the first to the first slide, we are asking which is more important. You have to answer that question. You can answer at the end of each of your AOK sections. You can answer in your conclusion, but you've got to answer it. But in thinking about your analysis at the end of each body paragraph, I would just say this is important because, and by this, I mean your evidence. Even though I always say in your conclusion, take a strong stand, don't, don't sit on both sides of the fence, this one is actually okay. So what you might be able to say in a conclusion is that the unexplainable is more important in the natural sciences, but the explainable is more important in the arts. If you wanna say something like that, that's okay, but still try to take a stand. Say this in this okay, and this in the other okay, the other a okay. Take a stand, make an answer. But then if you do something like this on the screen right now, what I would then do is say in your conclusion, say, but overall, I believe that either one or the other is more important. Give a conclusion that actually concludes something. Okay, so now thinking about the organization a little bit more, what you can do if you wanna do something really simple is this. This is the, the basic emergency, I'm waiting till it's due week um, organization. You have two paragraphs about the arts, one about explained, one about unexplained, and then two paragraphs in the natural sciences, one about explained, one about unexplained. And all of those is saying why the explained is important and then why the explained unexplained is important. But then because this is asking not is it important, but which is more important, what you really need to do is have a comparison paragraph. So at the end, say at the end of the day or at the end of the essay, this one is more important. Now, that would be a very simple way of doing it. If you wanna get a little bit more complex, you can do this. You can have a comparison section at the end of each AOK -okay section talking about which is more important. Or, and this example gets a little bit more complex, and complex is good, is you could have one section about the unexplained, then say which is why, why the unexplained is more important, and then have um, in the uh, a section about the explained, and talk about which is more important. Then you want to remember, draw some conclusions in the in the conclusion. Don't summarize, don't waste your time summarizing in the, in the conclusion. Take all of the evidence and come to a statement that says, at the end of the day, at the end of the essay, this is more important. All right, but you're not here for organization. You're here for examples. You're here for research and evidence. Let me talk first about the natural sciences. So one of the things about the natural sciences is that things that cannot be explained lead us to search for knowledge. And what I mean by this is in the natural sciences, it's not like you have explained and unexplained here. You really have them working together. And what I mean is if something is um, unexplained, we're going to create a hypothesis. And if we create a hypothesis, we're gonna to lead to research, and that research leads to potential answers, and those potential answers will lead us to being able to explaining things. So what cannot be explained 
can motivate us to progress scientifically, and that will help us to explain things. Let me give you two examples, but the concepts in these examples can really be applied almost anywhere. So there's a video that I'll put a link down to in the description. And by the way, um, everything that I talk about here will be in a link to the description. It'll take you to my website and everything is listed right there, okay? And while you're down there, why, why don't you go ahead and subscribe, go ahead and check TOK Masterclass. I have a free lesson on my website there. So there's a video on YouTube featuring uh, Michio Kaku. That's this guy here with the cool hair. And it's called, Is God a Mathematician? It, that's got, is got, is God a Mathematician? Typo, and I'm gonna be too lazy to change that. Is God a mathematician? And what he talks about here isn't actually about God. He kind of gets off topic here and starts talking about why math is just so important. And one of his conclusions is that when we could, when, when Newton couldn't explain things, when he saw the effects of gravity but couldn't explain it, that led him to, to invent calculus. And I don't know how that works, but basically not being able to explain something is that it the importance of not being able to explain something is that it causes us to be creative in our endeavors to seek knowledge. So Newton couldn't explain something that prompted him to do things to be able to explain it. Now we can explain gravity and planets, and we're going to get to that. So what you can do when you look at any example in the natural sciences is ask, how did the unexplainable cause progress. And what you really can talk about here is usefulness. So when we're thinking about is it important or is it less important? Usefulness. Usefulness can talk about importance. So what would be important about the unexplainable? Well, then it can be really useful. So one last thing about Newton that talks about the unexplainable becoming explainable. Once we have knowledge that is explainable, and specifically I'm thinking about gravity, we can then use it to do things that we weren't originally aiming to do in the in the beginning. So when, when um, Newton is trying to explain the unexplainable, when, when he is confronted with the unexplainable, this apple fell from a tree. Can the moon then fall? What we're actually able to do once that is explained, this is weird, is we're able to use that knowledge of gravity to explain something completely, at least on the surface, that's unrelated. And that would be how the ocean works. So we can use the explainable gravity to now explain brand new things that we didn't know were related. So the explainable in the natural sciences is very related to the unexplainable. And I think that you can really make some of your evidence interact while they're together. Another interesting approach would be to talk about the Large Hadron Collider. I think that's how, when I first saw it, I thought it was the Hydrogen Collider. No, the Hadron Collider and the Higgs boson. And the Higgs boson was theorized, it was just an idea, in 1966 as a way to explore or explain things that were unexplainable and it's super confusing, but basically just think about like the building blocks of the universe. But now, the LHC has discovered and proven that the theory, the Higgs boson, was true. We didn't know it in 1966, but now we do. So again, what was unexplainable in 1966 is now explainable in 2022. That takes us into the idea of um, whether or not things actually are unexplainable or if things are just unexplainable for a time. So in 1966, because of the lack of technology and shared knowledge, the Higgs boson was completely unexplainable. It was a theory, it was an idea. But 50 years later, it is explained. So maybe everything is explainable, but just at a certain time period. So Higgs explained something in a theory. It was proven to be true decades later, and to be able to explain this, new technology was invented as well. So the unexplainable can lead to advances in technology as a part of the pursuit of explaining the unexplainable. So one of the things that you would say, one of the tangible ways of making this important is it leads to new technology. Now that the Higgs boson is explained, we talk about what it, this is useful for. Now, I'm not a scientist, but what this is helping us understand is what the universe is made of and how it was constructed. So you need to, in your comparison, weigh the importance of the usefulness of this information with the importance of things that come from what we have that is explainable. Now, I'm not really sure how this fits in, but one of the things that I learned is that the Large Hadron Collider wasn't just like made, it wasn't just like invented, but there were a bunch of smaller colliders that were built like, you know, starting in the 1960s and stuff, or maybe even earlier, and pieces of those machines were used to build the new machines. And so in the pursuit of the um, unexplainable, we have this technology kind of guiding us along or maybe holding our hand. I mean, are we holding its hand or is technology holding our hand? I don't know, but that's really the importance is um, the unexplainable pursues us, or uh, we pursue the unexplainable and come up with new knowledge there. So as you can see, Wrapping up this section on, on the natural sciences, I really think that the, the unexplainable is more important just because it eventually becomes explainable, 
even if we're talking about a century later. Okay, moving on to the arts and my my other woman, Taylor Swift. This is a harder one because when we want to, to talk about the arts, we want to talk about knowledge, not just pieces of art. So make sure that you're focused on terms such as perspective, terms such as interpretation, and go along and follow those as you go through the section. So this could actually, this will be harder than the natural sciences, even though most people choose arts because there's a lot of easy examples to choose from. So when we're talking about explaining the unexplainable, one of the things that will really be easy is talking about uh, religious works of art. Now, whether or not you're religious, you can totally tackle this because of, for most of Western history, art was commissioned by churches. And if you're making a religious work of art, you're trying to explain in visual terms, something that can't be explained. So for in this case, we might say um, that art can be important by trying to explain the unexplainable, which is religion or, or metaphysical claims. So with religious art, this is a great example of that. So you could point at something like Rembrandt's The Return of the Prodigal Son. I love this painting. You could point at the Sistine Chapel. What you can also look at is the Transfiguration. This is a really honestly goofy picture of Jesus, but it's trying to explain something that um, even to this day, theologians don't fully understand. So what is the relationship between art and explaining things of a religion that um, are unexplainable? Because this is like some crazy thing that Jesus did, and this is a story. And um, yeah, so we don't know exactly what happened, but at the end of the day, this art is trying to provide some knowledge. So the unexplainable is the prompt for this. Another thing related to a religious art is a controversy about depicting religious figures. So Muslims prohibit the, pro the, the prophet from being depicted, and we all know that that is a huge deal. But actually, many Christians have historically prohibited Jesus or God and, and others from being depicted as well. So you can learn about, the word here would be icons. You can learn about more about this, but basically the idea is that there is this unexplainable and we just don't want to use art to talk about it at all. But um, the artist is trying to um, connect in a really interesting way, and some would say spiritual or metaphysical way, to the supernatural. And does art do that? How does it do that? How does it not do that? And then what are they trying to gain from that? So just search icons in, in religion. Another thing that's unexplainable in art is uh, what is the purpose of life? What is the meaning of life? So try to find a work of art. This could be a movie that you like. This could be a book that you like that explores the meaning or the purpose of life. So we can't explain it. That's unexplainable, but people try to do that. And art tries to do that all the time. What popped in my mind, and I, I wouldn't steal this just because this is too personal, but if you want to go ahead, I just would probably not because examiners may be watching this video, is the movie called The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Now, if you haven't seen this movie, you got to see it. Ben Stiller sometimes sucks really bad, but th this movie is so good. So throughout the movie, they have this theme and, and they say this is the purpose of life. Now, in the movie, it's the purpose of life magazine, but then they reveal it to say this is the meaning of life. And it's this. Come on, computer. To see the world things dangerous to come to, to see behind walls, draw closer, to find each other, and to feel. That is the purpose of life. So when it comes to the unexplainable, the unanswerable, topics like that are really what gets life going. And we don't even know if this is the purpose of life, th th this idea right here. Do we know? We don't know, but that is what it's claiming to do. So a lot of art would claim that their perspective has the answers to these unexplainable questions, these big questions, why are we all here? But um, do they? I don't know, but it works for a really good starting point. Another thing you wanna talk about is what does art explain that other areas of knowledge can't? So what are, what is art good at? It's really good at explaining the untangible. So for example, the scientific, is, the scientific method is pretty bad at explaining what it's like to be dumped. But you know who's really good at explaining that? My girl, Taylor Swift. So if you want to pull from an artist catalog, think about how an artist creates art from what they can explain. Their experiences, their feelings, either their unique feelings that nobody understands or the feelings that everybody understands and we're getting their interpretation. So a perfect example of this is Dear John. And um, in this song, which was about John, John Mayer, actually a really good guitarist, but um, we'll scratch out his face because he broke my girl's heart. Boo. I love you. That was a terrible heart. Wow, that's ugly. Sorry about that, Taylor. Um, he broke her heart, and so she wrote a song about it. And so I think that's something that we can experience, that we can understand. We, we, we've all been broken. Up. Actually, I've never been dumped before. But um, yeah, so, so we, we have all experienced heartbreak, but we've never experienced heartbreak from John Mayer. And so think about some of the art 
that you enjoy, where you've got that personal connection that is explaining something that has happened. It is explainable to talk about heartbreak, but how does art do that? And so which is more important? Exploring these ideas like what is the meaning of life? or exploring the explainable, like here is what I went through, let me write a song about it. In a similar way, you can think about art that expresses specific events. A great example of this is Guernica. So Picasso's super famous piece was commissioned by the Spanish government to help raise money for the Spanish Civil War. So he ended up making this artwork about the bombing of the city of Guernica, and it's, it's still loved today. This is just such an amazing, I don't wanna call it a beautiful painting because it's just, it's just wild. But he used his artistic skill to bring emotion to something that we haven't experienced, but can it be explained? What he's doing here is explaining the terror of war. He's explaining a specific event that happened and how awful it was, but in an impacting piece of art. So we can not just see the events, but we can almost feel the terror. We can feel the emotion behind these events. And that's what art is really good at. So with all of these examples that I've shared about art, I'm showing you what's behind it. You could pick nearly any piece of art here. Don't steal mine, find your own. But I would say for arts, it's really important to find something that you like, something that you want to write about. That's a lot of stuff. I hope this was helpful. If you need more help, hit me up on Fiverr. I can take a look at your essays. You can look at TOK Masterclass. There's a free lesson up there. And then you can also go to get an A and TOK.com slash free stuff. I'll give you outlines. I'm gonna make a movie about how to work my outlines later and that will be very helpful. That will probably be up just a couple of weeks after I upload this video. But if you're not sure about which prompt you wanna do yet, um, I would say watch all my videos, but honestly, pick this one. This one's really easy. You've got your organization provided for you and you've got your AOKs provided for you too. All right, I hope that helps. I hope TOK sucks a little bit less than it did about 15, 20 minutes ago. I'll see you next time.